Hi, everyone, and thanks a lot for joining us. I'm DeMarco Morgan. Russia is retaliating against the United States and other Western nations. The Kremlin announced Thursday it was ordering 150 diplomats out of the country, including 60 Americans. Now, this response comes after several nations took action against Russia for the poisoning of a former double agent in Britain. Russia's foreign ministry informed U.S. Ambassador John Huntsman that they were matching the number of diplomats expelled from the U.S. The country will also close the U.S. consulate in St. Petersburg. The U.S. closed Russia's embassy in Seattle earlier this month, and Charlie Daggett is in Moscow with the latest. Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov didn't mince his words. 60 U.S. diplomats have seven days to leave Russia. That's an exact match of the number of Russian diplomats expelled by the U.S. on Monday. The U.S. consulate in St. Petersburg will also be closed. Lavrov warned it won't end there. The tit-for-tat expulsions come after a Russian double agent and his daughter were poisoned by a military-grade nerve agent in England. The deadly chemical set off panic and was internationally condemned. The agent, Novichok, was developed by Russia in the 1980s. In all, 28 countries in the West have expelled 150 Russian diplomats since the attack. In an interview before tonight's expulsions, U.S. Ambassador John Huntsman said the nerve agent attack can't go unpunished. The message that is being sent is you cannot use a military-grade nerve agent on the streets of Salisbury against a British citizen and his daughter without a response. But Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said there was no proof Russia was to blame for the attack and compared it to misleading information she said the West used to justify the invasion of Iraq. Nobody asked for some additional materials on a weapon of mass destruction which uh, Saddam Hussein was accused of having and using. Nobody asked for more evidence. They just trusted the United States and Great Britain, and they were betrayed. The State Department said Russia had no justification in kicking out those U.S. diplomats, saying it would only lead to further isolation. DeMarco. All right, Charlie Daggett reporting. Charlie, thank you for that report. Uh, CBS News State Department reporter Kylie Atwood joins me now. Kylie, always good to see you and good to have you here uh, in the city. Uh, I guess the first question to you, uh, is Russia's response expected or it, does it come as a bit of a surprise? Well, let's look at the past, right? And Russia has retaliated when the U.S. takes any actions against them. So last summer, Congress moved to impose sanctions on Russia for meddling in the 2016 elections. And Russia reacted by forcing the U.S to cut the number of staffers that work for the U.S. in Russia by 775 people. Whoa, that was big. So it's not that if this was expected or not, usually Russia does retaliate. But the U.S. is saying that their retaliation in this situation is not justified, that the U.S. took this action because Russia did something completely illegal, which is against world and everything that's okay and is hurting people in the streets. So that's why the U.S. took their action. I know. We also heard from uh, Russia's foreign ministry, a spokesperson, and actually heard that they compared uh, the accusations that Russia killed uh, Sergei uh, Skripal to the U.S. uh, belief that uh, Saddam Hussein possessed weapons of mass destruction uh, back in the day uh, during uh, the 2000s. What does it tell you uh, that Russia is still maintaining its innocence, saying basically we did nothing? These are accusations, just that. Exactly. So based on that comparison, you know, comparing this situation to the Saddam situation, we aren't given any indication that Russia is going to come clean and say that, yes, we were the ones who directed this attack on a former Russian spy. Um, But the question is, what's the breaking point for Russia? We now have more than 30 countries that have expelled more than 150 Russian diplomats, and that's going to be harmful for Russia as they try and carry out normal diplomatic relations and also as they try and carry out their intelligence operations. All of the folks from Russia who were expelled from the U.S. are said to be spies. And so that's not going to be helpful for them. But is it a sense of uh, a fair game as well? Uh, The United States is putting their people out. Hey, you put my people out, I'm going to put yours out. I mean, how significant is that when it comes to the relationship uh, with the U.S. and other international countries? Yeah, I think that's a good question. And when push comes to shove, how far can they go? You know, how many Russians have to be expelled internationally for Russia to stop and for the U.S. to stop reacting to what Russia is doing? And I think it's important to note that 
these tensions that the U.S. and Russia have right now, and the U.S. has, uh, the Russia has with the international community, also come to the fore in other areas of foreign policy. So let's look at Afghanistan. Russia is backing the Taliban in Afghanistan. And I've talked to U.S. officials who have said that essentially Russia is holding that situation hostage, not helping the U.S. in supporting the Afghan government to, to create stability there because U.S.-Russia relations are not doing so well right now. And so there are other areas is that we're going to have to watch in the foreign policy stage to see where this comes out in terms of Russian aggression continued in other areas. There was one thing that actually uh, stood out for me, Kylie. Uh, the State Department spokesperson, Heather Nauert, said Thursday that the U.S. has the ability to do more in response uh, to Russia's actions. Do we know exactly what that means? That's frightening. Now, we could do more than this, of course. I know we can, but would it be the smart thing to do? Well, we're going to have to see what the U.S. decides, right? We just found out this news today, and the U.S. isn't known to try and show their hand at the decisions that they're going to follow through with. But what could they do? What could the State Department do? They could sanction more Russian individuals. They could kick out more Russian diplomats. There are about 400 uh, Russian diplomats that are still in the U.S., so they're on the table. We also have Russian consulates in Houston and one in New York, in addition to their U.S. embassy that's in uh, the, in addition to their Russian embassy, which is in Washington, D.C. And so you look at all of those factors and the U.S. officials are going to be looking and saying, should we cut more? And we'll see if they yeah, do. But if you keep putting people out, that's going to cause some tension that we don't need. No one needs. Russia doesn't need it. The United States doesn't need it. Tension's already there, right? Uh, you're right. You said it. All right, Kylie Atwood, always good to see you. And thanks a lot for coming in for us. Thank you.